I've got a very interesting and beautiful specimen to prepare today. Uh, it's a pink orchid mantis. It's a little sad because a friend of mine had raised this from a small nymph and it got to adulthood and a few days later it died, so it's kind of mysterious. I guess molting's hard on them. But anyway, it's a beautiful specimen. Now, I'm soaking this in acetone. And again, acetone is toxic and flammable, so you should always be careful with it. Um, normally, we're careful about soaking uh, green katydids or phasmids or you know stick bugs or leaf bugs or something because the, the acetone can bleach out the green and turns it kind of yellow. And I was concerned about this as well. I have never <laughs> prepared one of these before. And usually I only soak it for a few hours. So yesterday I soaked it for around five or six hours and it was still kind of soft. Uh, I think that this mantis hadn't entirely hardened its exoskeleton in the short time that it was an adult. So um, I actually left it in there overnight. And uh, it's nice. It's stiffened up well and there's still pink in it. And you know we want to preserve the the lovely white color. If you just uh, dried this out without an acetone soak, it would turn brown. So I think this is actually going to turn out really well. Now, when we have uh, soaked it for so long, it does stiffen the limbs, but they're still flexible enough. I can still uh, adjust the legs with this. So uh, we're going to pin this up now. I just want to let the acetone dry off a little bit before I put it on the styrofoam because the acetone will melt styrofoam so we'll just pause it for a minute. Alright, now the acetone is evaporated off a bit and um, I think this is going to come out really really nice. The hind wings, I can see the flight wings here are sticking out a little bit. These are the cover wings and then there's flight wings underneath. And uh, when this was alive the, the wings would be held sort of rolled and you wouldn't see this um, flight wing sticking out and uh, I think they're a little stiff because of the acetone so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the cover wings and I'm going to fold the flight wings together as they would be if the animal was alive get these positioned here there and then I'm going to use a, a pin, a very fine pin. This is a, like a double zero or triple zero. And I'm going to lace it through the, whoops, double zero pin here. I'm going to lace it through the wings right, just to kind of hold them in place there. And then I can, I can remove the pin once it's dried. And let's see if that works. Oh yeah, that's good. See, that's the way it looked when it was uh, when it was alive. Now, I've got an extra long pin, uh, very thin. I don't know. It's about a one or a zero, and uh, I don't know where I got it. It's a stainless steel pin, and I like to use stainless steel for light-colored or valuable specimens. Um, it's extra long. It has a tiny little head. Uh, it just came my way at some point, and I've been hanging on to it. And I think this is a perfect, perfect opportunity uh, to use it. Now, the, the mantis, when it's alive, it sits sort of up like this. It's not like lying flat. So I want to put the pin through um, in this position that I want it in. And I'm going to go just between and in front of the wings. And I want to get it nice and straight right through. There, and now I can flip it over and see where the pins come out on the bottom. And I can see it's come out a little bit to one side, so I'm going to retract the pin slightly and have it come out through a new opening. There, that's pretty good. Yeah, right between those legs. Now I'll position the specimen, and again, getting the pin very straight. Let's see. You know the wings are sort of touching the bottom. I think I need to angle it a little bit more that way. 
So I'm going to reposition the pin. I'm just going to withdraw a little bit and then push it back through a little bit higher there. Now I get the pin nice and straight. Make sure it's straight. Okay, get this straight this way. Uh, now, um, get some bracing pins here. We're going to brace the abdomen first so that it doesn't spin around. I'm going to raise this up a little on the pin. There we go. Now I'm going to put some bracing under the thorax. So I'm going to use long pins for that. To um, hold the thorax in position. Uh, I'll start with the hind legs. I think she's going to put this into a diorama, which I think is a, a good use for it. Put it in a bell jar on a artificial orchid or something. I think it'll be beautiful. Brace this leg. This leg. These are really spectacular mantises to keep as pets, but they are not easy. Uh, if any of you have raised uh, like a Chinese mantid or something, and you've just got an egg case at a, a garden shop, those are pretty easy. They're they're not too fussy. But these are much more delicate tropical creatures, so. Uh, these things do happen sometimes. They get uh, stuck in a molt or internally something's not correct from a molt. Uh, shedding your entire exoskeletons kind of stressful. I'm going to pull this one down. Looking at that flap. It's uh, wrinkled up a little bit. And they're not terribly long-lived anyway. Uh, I'm not certain about this species, uh, how long they live, but a lot of the mantis is just a few months. Although a friend of mine's got a Duraplates, a dead leaf mantis, that has been an adult for, I think, almost a year, which was really a surprise to me. I didn't expect them to live that long. This one flap's kind of folded. I wonder if I can... Straighten that out a little bit. No, I think that's just the way it's shaped. Okay. Now the front legs. I'll have them uh, separated here a little bit. I want them to look sort of relaxed and natural. that. Maybe we'll lift this one up a little bit. There's a long pin. Yeah. It seems to be a little angled here. I'm going to try and straighten this out a little bit. There, that's better. Brace this leg a little bit. Let me fold that one in more. Let's see. Huh. That looks pretty good. Now, the head, of course, on mantises is one of their amazing features. It swivels around and they can look over their shoulder and it's pretty astounding. I think it's one of the things that allow humans to identify with them so much because they do kind of look more like a 
an animal we're familiar with. Boy, you know, I don't think I can do much more with that. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe raise these legs up slightly. Yeah, a little bit more dynamic look to it. Yeah, let me do that. And um, then lastly, I'm going to try and uh, tuck these wings under here, get them to look a little better. I'm just going to use some pins to gently brace these wings to see if that will help them stay in place. Lift this up a little bit. Oh, I know what I'll do. Lift this pin up a little bit. And also lift the abdomen up a little bit from below. Tuck this little bit in here. Yes, that looks good. Okay. One last check here. Bring this leg down a little bit and in a little more. We should have one of them folded up. And this one's missing uh, one antenna. The other antenna is intact. But their antennas are very thin. So I don't think they rely very much on their antennae. I think that's, uh, they're mostly visual. I'm going to push this um, leg flap down here a little bit too. Yeah, it's actually all right. Yeah, I think that's good. Now, it shouldn't take too long for this to dry out. It's soaked overnight in acetone, so it's probably pretty dry. Uh, we'll see how that comes out. Now, it's been a couple of days. The specimen is dry, so I'm going to pull the pins. Uh, one of the things I did after just pinning this up the other day, this leg flap here was folded sort of folded up and I kind of unfolded it to get it spread out um, and it's spread out but it's a bit wrinkly and I think there's a way for us to fix that I'm gonna get here you can see uh, it's got some wrinkles in it and uh, what I'm going to do is rehydrate this and uh, try and flatten it out you can see this rear leg flap came out really nice and smooth uh, I think what happened is when this uh, em emerged in its final molt. Uh, for some reason that got flipped over and then it uh, dried like that so uh, it's, it was difficult to get it to, to lay flat but I think we can work on that. Okay so we're going to pull the pins Now it's spinning on the pin because it's uh, so dry. If we were going to fix it on the pin, I'd put a little tiny drop of glue underneath here by the pin. But as I say, this specimen may end up in a diorama. Uh, now let's look at those leg flaps. Yeah, so what I want to do is rehydrate just this section. And uh, I have a technique for that. 